Today, we are talking about potentially the greatest defining factor in movement efficiency. This is also going to help with things like toe hooking and heel hooking. And if this sounds like something you need, then watch to the end because this is the fundamentals of lower body flexibility. My name is Josh Hadley and I am the lead flexibility coach here at Lattice Training. So today I'm going to show you the fastest methods to improving your flexibility that will have a direct transfer into your climbing movement. First, however, we're going to cover the fundamentals of flexibility training. And we're going to start up with what I call strength through range. This refers to increasing the strength through the whole range of movement. If you want to use your flexibility on the wall, it's really important you have the strength to display and actively move through this entire range of motion. So when we're thinking about flexibility training, it's important we're building strength and flexibility at the same time. We're gonna talk about three great methods which you can use to improve your strength and flexibility. The first one is loaded progressive stretching. This means using a weight or resistance to assist you and pull you deeper into a stretch, but then also moving through the entire range of motion with that resistance. The next is using overcoming isometrics, so contraction followed by relaxation. And then this can be cycled throughout the whole set. This is also similar to PNF stretching, where we are forming a contraction when we're stretched at that end range. The contraction helps facilitate more range, but also that contraction is going to cause us to build strength in that end range of motion as well. The last one is using high leverage positions. So this means assuming a position which is challenging to hold and holding an isometric contraction within that position. The benefit of these methods of training are that they tend to be really fast at increasing our flexibility through increasing our strength at the same time. Often the intensity is very high, so we want the frequency to be low, which means generally we're training somewhere between one to two times per week with this form of training. Although we have discussed using weights to do your flexibility training, remember the aim of flexibility training is to increase range of motion. This is your primary aim, not strength training. So you're only ever gonna use enough weight to pull you that little bit further deeper into your stretch position. Don't overdo it with the amount of weight. If anything, using really heavy loads might actually limit your range of motion because your muscles won't allow you to go deeper into a stretch because they're weaker in this position. If you do do it with really heavy loads, you might just end up overdoing it. Without setting goals, it's really hard to measure your progress and without progress, what's the point in training? For setting goals, it's really good to find positions which are measurable. So things like the side split or the front split or the pike and forward fold. These things you can measure progress from day to day and week to week and see if your training is working or not. Simply having the goal of getting more flexible for climbing is really hard to measure. So try and refine it to certain positions or certain skills that you know will translate to better hamstring flexibility, better hip adductor flexibility. This is where you'll find that transfer to your climbing. I understand that flexibility can be hard to measure. However, using things like taking photos and drawing angles and also using touch points makes flexibility very measurable. If we take the side split, for example, you can use an angle drawer to measure your depth in the side split. Or for example, if we use the pike, you can do touch points, use touching toes, touching fists and palms on the floor. If you're not yet touching your toes with your fingers, you can use objects such as books or yoga blocks to measure how deep you go into the stretch if you've not yet touched the floor. Length before strength is a term I will use when we're talking about the sequencing of exercises within our flexibility session. When we think about flexibility, we often have two muscle groups to consider. One I will call the lengthening side and the other the shortening side. So if you use the example of heel hooking, when we bring our leg up to place it on a hold to heel hook, our hamstrings need to lengthen and our hip flexors and quads, potentially our core, are the shortening muscles. These are the muscles drawing the leg up to place it in position. It is important as climbers that we focus on strengthening this side of the joint as well. So the shortening side of the joint. However, it makes a lot of sense to leave this to the end of your training session. So length, then strength. This is because strength is absolutely integral to your flexibility. Let's take the L-sit for example. 
If you're training the L-sit position and you have really tight hamstrings, this is gonna be a resistance against the strength of your hip flexors. Now your hamstrings are a large muscle group and your hip flex is relatively small in comparison. They're gonna lose that battle. So to improve your L-sit and the strength in your hip flexors, it's a really good idea to first stretch your hamstrings and then train your hip flexors in that sequence. This is because one, isometric strength is very angle specific to where we're training it. And two, we want to be strong at the end range, that short range or really acute angle to make the most of the flexibility we have in that lengthening side. Before we jump into the exercises, the last thing we need to cover and potentially one of the most important things in flexibility is a phrase I'll use is feeling before form. In strength training, we often say form is king and that you need to use good form. However, in flexibility, I believe that feeling is almost much more important than form. This is because we all have vastly different anatomies, we're strong in different places, we're tight in different places. And when we're performing flexibility exercises, we're really exploring the end range or the nuances of our movement in our body. This means that our positions or the form we use might change quite different from individual to individual. So you should never really be trying to copy exactly what an exercise looks like, but more what it should feel like. Primarily what I'm saying when I'm saying what it feels like is where you're feeling the stretch or the tension. Let's use, for example, the pike position or the forward fold. The aim of this is to stretch the hamstrings and this is where you should feel the stretch. However, if you're doing this exercise and you're feeling more of a stretch in the lower back and less in the hamstrings, or perhaps you're feeling more in the calves and the back of the knee, we can modify the stretch by adding a soft bend in the knee or maybe doing a slightly different exercise like a single leg good morning where we keep a nice neutral spine and we isolate the stretch in the hamstring. Long story short, you need to know the intent of the stretch and make sure you feel it there as a priority. This first session we're going to cover is great for sport climbers or those that tend to work more on vertical terrain. This is going to help open up the hip adductors and help you move in that frontal plane. The weighted tailor's pose or butterfly stretch is going to be performed up against a wall. So you have that support for your back and you're sat upright. You're going to add load to your knees using dumbbells or kettlebells, somewhere between five and maybe up to 10 kilos. Remember, the weight is there just to take you slightly deeper into the stretch, but not to crush you. We're going to use pause reps or slow tempo. So the key thing to remember here is lower slowly into the stretch and then hold that stretch for a two or three count. The weighted horse squat is very simply a wide squat. Now we can progress the width of this, but for most people it's good to start with a five step distance. However, you can move to a seven step distance and so on as you improve with your flexibility. The first aim in this exercise with our five step is to go as deep as our knee level with our hips. Once you break this level, you can progress the width to a seven step and then aim to do the same and so on. I recommend starting this with no load and just get used to the position because often your body weight can be enough leverage to bring you deeper into the stretch. However, as you improve and want to build strength, you can add more weight to this stretch. A couple form cues to remember here are your feet should either be pointing directly forwards or slightly turned out and you should be trying to draw your knees apart by tensing your glutes and opening up your hips. Lastly, we're going to do a strengthening drill. And remember, we said length before strength. So this is our strength component. We're gonna be training the fire hydrant position. Here, you're lifting your leg to contract your external rotators and glutes. Remember, you're trying to contract at end range. So lift as high as possible. Try to contract here for three seconds, followed by a three second rest and you can repeat this cycle for anywhere between three to five repetitions. This next session is really great for boulderers or people climbing on steep terrain where you tend to move in the sagittal plane, so arms and legs out in front. Now the first exercise is gonna focus on hamstrings, but here's a really good tip for working on your hamstring flexibility is always start with calf stretching. Generally, this is part of the posterior chain, which you can feel tightness in when you're doing your hamstring stretching. So start with some calf stretching, start to loosen off that posterior chain and your hamstring stretching will benefit from it in the next sets. 
The single leg good morning is used to work one leg at a time. This is gonna help build the intensity into that hamstring muscle. We're gonna start with a B stance, which separates the foot, so one behind the other. From here, you're going to bend your back leg to keep your front leg straight. Keeping an anterior pelvic tilt, you're going to hinge at the hip, keeping your upper back straight, and then offering the weight over the front leg towards the floor. Allow the weight to pull you deeper into the stretch, but remember, the weight isn't doing the work for you. You're also actively pulling into the stretch using your own muscles in your hip flexors and quads. We tend to find using somewhere between five and 10 kilograms is a good weight for this exercise. The seated pancake is an excellent exercise for that hip flexion, which is gonna help with your hamstring flexibility. However, it's performed in a straddle position, which is gonna help with your hip adductor flexibility as well. We see this one transfer really well to heel hooking ability, particularly on wide heel hooks or compression moves where you have to get around a prow or an erect. Again, this is primarily a hip hinge exercise. So think about an anterior pelvic tilt and leaning into it, contracting your hip flexors to pull you deeper into the stretch. You can place a load on your upper back, somewhere between five and 10 kilograms really helps. The best way to progress this exercise as you increase your range of motion is with the depth of the seated pancake. Generally, most people will start with an elevated pancake, so sat on a box. And as you improve your range of motion, you're going to reduce the height of that box until eventually you're sat on the floor. If you're still finding it difficult with an elevated box, you can start with a standing pancake and then progress on from there. Now for the strengthening component. This is the hip flexor raise. Here we're training the strength of the hip flexors to extend the hamstring. A great place to start with this one is actually prone laying on the floor and using a door frame to set the minimum angle of your leg. From here, you can aim to lift off the door frame by just a few inches. If you can lift off with range of motion more than a few inches, shift closer to the door frame so that your minimum range of motion gets deeper and deeper. And this is how you measure your progression from week to week. When your bum reaches the door frame and you can't get any closer, you're gonna to move to a standing hip flexor lift using a box to set the minimum height. Similar to the fire hydrant in the previous session, we can use a three second contraction, three second relaxation, or three to five repetitions. Generally, I will rest one to two minutes between these exercises, but the aim of this is to build flexibility and strength. So simply rest as long as you feel is necessary to maintain the quality of the sets and the intensity and the depth that you can reach. Because these sessions are rather intense and you should see them as strength flexibility training, they should be performed either after your climbing session or on their own day in a separate session all of their own. This doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't do flexibility training within your warm-ups. It's actually really important that you are doing flexibility training in your warm-ups because as you'll know, flexibility has quite an acute response in your increased range of motion. This means that when you get on the wall and you're climbing and performing skills and movement acquisition, you want to be performing these skills with a good range of motion and performing high heel hooks and high steps and then strengthening that range of motion in the most specific way possible on the wall. So therefore, just like you would warm up your strength by doing pull-ups, maybe some fingerboard hangs before you start climbing, you're gonna to wanna to do the same with your flexibility to improve your skill and potential within your climbing sessions. For warm-up sessions, I generally stick to two or three fairly light passive stretches, somewhere between 30 to 60 seconds or two to three sets and also add in some dynamic leg kicks like front kicks or side kicks just to help build up that dynamic flexibility potential. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, these strength flexibility sessions, the ones that are quite intense, are done at a much lower frequency to what you would traditionally do with your more relaxed passive stretching sessions. So I will stick to a frequency of once to twice a week with these sessions. And I would never really perform strength flexibility sessions any more than three times a week. These sessions themselves will last somewhere between 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how many sets you're performing. But you're really not gonna perform more than two to three sets of any of these exercises. A good rule is to finish the exercise when you feel you're not achieving any more range of motion on that day. This isn't to say that you shouldn't do relaxed, passive stretching on your other days. A method I really like to do for myself and with some of my clients 
is to do passive stretching short sessions on the days in between their strength flexibility training. I liken this to the greasing the groove method, which essentially means we're reminding the nervous system on a daily basis the skills or movement patterns we want to be able to achieve within our goals. In this way, we're using these passive relaxed flexibility sessions to bridge the gap between our intense strength flexibility sessions. I will generally keep these relaxed passive sessions that you do on the other days very short and less time consuming. We've got a five minute lower body follow along video which has gone down really well and this is the kind of thing that we'll do on these other days. It doesn't take very long, it's five minutes of your day and it's more important that you make this a habit rather than a task to achieve within your training cycle. Remember, there are plenty of other forms of flexibility training that we have not described today, and there are also many nuances to training itself. This has been the fundamentals of flexibility training. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.